Hello and welcome back to episode 14.1 of Chiefsman's Corner. This is an offline redo of our attempted live show last night on October 17th. I do apologize for the internet issues. Unfortunately, I figured it out this morning after the internet issues happened and it was my fault. So I could have helped them, but I didn't think about it at the time and I was in a rush to get it out. So this is a redo of the broadcast from last night. Uh, I'm your host, one of the leadership team of the WFL, Coach one of us of the Seattle Seahawks. I am excited, as always, to be here talking WFL action with you. Our game plan tonight is to discuss, or today, actually, I should say, is to discuss some housekeeping notes. As usual, have a look back at week 10 of the WFL season with our players of the podcast. We'll finish out with our interactive segment, Ask the Chief. If you're watching this, thank you. We appreciate any and all support. Without you guys, the WFL doesn't exist, and that is a fact. The first thing I want to talk about today is the show for next week. Unfortunately, it will be delayed a bit, as I will be out of town Monday. I am hoping to have the show on Tuesday evening at the same 9 p.m. Eastern Time time slot. This will all depend on my significant other, the wife, however, so I will let you know on Discord if plans change or if a show has to be delayed a little further or if it will be any show next Monday. But the tentative plan is to have the show at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, uh, actually October 25th. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is the WFL's incentive plan. This plan allows you to get some perks that aren't available for every member simply by doing some extracurricular activities that involve WFL. Anything from Twitter to articles on the Neon Sports site to commenting or participating in this show. Anything that makes WFL a more immersive experience and increases its presence in the Madden community earns you some sort of credit. A link to the incentive plan is available using the command slash incentive plan in Discord. That is all one word, slash incentive plan in Discord, and that document will be DM'd directly to you. The third thing to talk about is our Ask the Chief form. You can use this form during the week or right before the show between episodes to submit any questions you have for me, and I'll answer them during the show, giving you credit for the question. It's an easy way to build up incentive points and provide extra content for the podcast. Use the command ask the chief, that's all one word, slash ask the chief to pull up the form in Discord. It'll be DM'd directly to you. I'd also like to ask for help in recruiting new owners to the league. I know that Madden 23 has had its faults and a lot of guys have given up on this cycle already, but hopefully we can fill our four remaining openings before the regular season ends. We are currently have the Patriots, the Titans, the Steelers and the Lions are open right now. Uh, I will do what I can posting on Neon Sports and some sites I'm access to, but please do what you can to help as well because it can mean incentive points. It is brand new to our incentive plan. With us officially on the back half of the season, it is time to start talking and thinking about the WFL Associated Press. Their task will be to pick players to award attribute points to in the offseason based on awards earned in the following categories. Most Valuable Player, Offensive and Defensive Players of the Year, Offensive and Defensive Rookies of the Year, and our very own WFL All-Pro Team for the NFC and AFC. These awards supersede the ones given by Madden and are awarded by owners who are members of the WFL Associated Press. Finally, with us on that back end of the season, as mentioned earlier, be on the lookout for the end-of-season survey coming out. I did not do one last Madden with all our issues that we had getting to an end of season point. I didn't want to fool with it last Madden, quite honestly. Uh, but I want to get back to hearing and responding to any and all feedback, good and bad, on our WFL operation. Anything we can do to improve that is reasonable, we'll look to tinker with moving into season three. And with our housekeeping out of the way, let's recap the scores from week 10 and highlight our offensive and defensive players of the podcast. And like I did last time, this will be just a shot uh, of the week 10 schedule as shown here and we'll go through the scores real quick and then I'll go over my offensive and defensive players of the podcast <clears throat> excuse me the CPU Pittsburgh Steelers earned their first win of the regular season winning over the New Orleans Saints 41 to 25 is your final next game on the docket we have the Dallas Cowboys and Green Bay Packers Green Bay moves to 9 and 2 on the season with a 23 to 17 tough battle against the Dallas Cowboys who fall to 4 and 6 on the year Denver comes to their second win of the regular season winning 30 to 24 over the CPU Tennessee Titans who fall to 2 and 8 on the regular season a good game between Miami and Cleveland in a battle of AFC uh, dominant forces 
Uh, ends in Miami winning and moving to 7-3 and on the season with a 23-12 victory over the Cleveland Browns, who fall to 8-2 and on the regular season. Minnesota drumming Buffalo 44-17. Minnesota goes to 8-2 and on the season. Buffalo falls to 6-4. and Las Vegas ekes out a win over the Indianapolis Colts, 31-28 in Coach Juke's final CPU game as he is now back from his vacation, I do believe. So he will be looking to improve upon his 7-4 record, which is still quite good in the AFC. Las Vegas improves to 4-5 and five and looks forward to a huge showdown with the Seattle Seahawks next week, uh, or week 12, I should say. Uh, Jacksonville loses to Kansas City 24-20. Kansas City moves to 6-3 on the season. Jacksonville falls to 6-4. Atlanta with an upset over the Carolina Panthers. 23-20 is your final there. Atlanta gets their third win of the season, and Carolina falls to 6-4 and and a little bit behind in that competitive NFC South. Excuse me. Uh, Tampa Bay and Seattle. This ended up being a simulation game due to a disconnect issue. Uh, the simulation was way less competitive than the actual game. Uh, 40 to 15 was your final here. Tampa Bay moves to eight and two. Seattle falls back to 500 at five and five. Uh, the Giants with a 33 to 14 victory over the Houston Texans. Houston falls to six and four in that competitive AFC South, while the Giants move to seven and three in a competitive NFC East. And you'll note the term competitive. There's a lot of competitive divisions still up for grabs in Week 11 and 12 of the season as we move forward toward the playoffs. The Rams with a 28 to nothing win over the Arizona Cardinals. Los Angeles moves to six and three. Arizona will fall to one nine and one on the season. Tough season for Ch- Coach Chili out there in Arizona. He's had a rough go of it, uh, but he's been in good spirits and he's been a good uh, good guy to have in chat there whenever he's been around. The only winless team, however, is a CPU team. The Detroit Lions move to 0-10 on the regular season as they get drummed by the Bears. 38-6 is your final there. Chicago moves just above 500 at 6-5 with that victory over the lowly Lions. In a barn burner, Philadelphia 42, Washington 25. The Commanders fall to 7-4 in that competitive NFC East. And Philadelphia rises to 7-3 and three in said competitive NFC East. Quite competitive, actually. And the final game on the docket, the San Francisco 49ers come away with a 28-17 victory over the Los Angeles Chargers. San Francisco moves to 6-3-1, and one, while Los Angeles Chargers fall to 2-7 and seven on the season. And that leads me to my players of the podcast. My offensive player of the podcast is going to be Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts, who went 17 of 23 for 194 yards and two touchdowns and rushed five times for 115 yards and one rushing touchdown, accumulating three touchdowns total in the 42-25 win over the Washington Commanders in Week 10. My defensive player of the podcast is going to be Falcons defensive end and Dominican Sue, who had a tackle and a sack and a half in a 23-20 upset win over the Panthers. There was a lot of candidates for offensive player of the podcast Not that many for defensive player of the podcast. So uh, a good series of setups there as we run our offensive and defensive players of the podcast. And now as I zoom in off scene uh, to see if I can get this bigger for our Ask the Chief segment. All right, and here we go. Boom, we're going to jump in here. Let's make it a little bit bigger for you guys at home that are watching. I don't know if I can get the darn thing to work here. Well, it's just going to be that big then. Let's do this. Let's just increase it a little bit. Boom, boom. There we go. So, I'm going to start with Rusta Buster here. Rusta Buster, our Bengals owner, says, How many seasons do you think we'll be able to get through in this file? Uh, In previous Maddens, we've gotten through at least four, if not five, seasons. I wouldn't mind tinkering with the idea of doing a play season sim season but until we make sure that we have a stable file to play with i don't want to commit to anything like that yet i also would need a robust amount of owner support and we'd have to structure it in such a fashion uh, that we make sure we don't have too many guys idle in a sim season because my personal idea behind it would be uh, to once the play season ends we do our draft and then we essentially simulate to week eight the trade deadline, see where everybody's at, make some trades, maybe take a 24 to 48 hours to have time to make those trades. Uh, no games will be played at all during the simulated season. Uh, and then once we're done with week eight, we would fast forward to the playoffs. And then in the playoffs, whoever makes the playoffs, 
would get to play in the playoffs, and we'd have a playoff series similar to what we had just had in the play season. Everybody who makes the playoffs would obviously do their normal scheduling, do the normal rules following, get us to the WFL Bowl, get us through another offseason, get us to another draft, and then we would begin our full play season. So it would be play sim, play sim. In that case, if we did something like that, we could probably squeeze in maybe seven, eight, or nine seasons, possibly. Uh, with our 72-hour uh, time frame as far as advances, that makes it a little tougher to get a multitude of uh, a high number, high volume of, of years in. Uh, but unfortunately for me, uh, I, can, I can't operate any faster than 72, to be just honest. Uh, I have a wife and I have a life, and I'd like to keep both of them. Uh, I don't want to have to get a divorce just for Madden because it's not worth it. So uh, with the 72-hour spectrum in there, I'd have to say that we, unless we do some kind of play season, sim season, 4 to 5 is about the most we get, and that is if we have a stable file, which with Madden 23, all bets are off unfortunately uh back to the ask the chief ruffles asked are we going to have a, ch a chance trade before the draft i think what he means is a big trade and i will tell him the same thing i mentioned on the live podcast that got cut uh there's always somebody that makes a surprise trade uh for the draft always somebody that jumps into the top five top ten of the draft that you did not expect to do so um and i could even see some teams like the baltimore ravens who currently have three first round selections uh, two from the Seattle Seahawks and their own, obviously, and that one one of the ones they got from Seattle, which was Denver's pick, is going to be a quite good pick. I can see them either culminating some picks to move up, or I can see them maybe trading one of their high picks to move back down if they don't see anything they like at the spots they end up. Ultimately, uh, you could potentially see the Ravens have picks in the two picks in the top five. Uh, I know they're not having a great year right now. He's getting better, but he's like everybody else. We're kind of getting used to the new Madden. Some of us are way better at getting used to it than others. Uh, and that kind of is that user skill gap. But there's always some kind of big trade that happens before the draft, and that's always an exciting time frame. Uh, off season is always an exciting time for me. I love the draft. I love the off season. Kind of gives everybody hope for the new season. Um, so there will definitely be some kind of trade before the draft. You can almost guarantee that. Uh, Ruffles also asked, are we going to be doing the incentive plan after this season? And Ruffles, I will say, as long as it, the file is stable – Yes. Uh, I really hated that we couldn't, or we didn't feel comfortable, I should say, doing an incentive plan set up for last season. Uh, I feel bad for it because people are going to have to earn their stripes to get their incentives. We're not going to award them like we did uh, coming into Madden 23. So if you have yet to do any article posting or Twitter doing or any sort of thing with the incentive plan and you want to get those incentives or you want to even find out what they are, uh, I talked about it at the top of the broadcast, slash incentive plan, all one word in Discord, and it sends you a DM of the document, tells you what you need to do uh, and how you need to do it. Uh, I pretty much covers everything, but uh, yeah, we want to do the incentive plan. We wanted to do the incentive plan coming out. We wanted to do rookie carryover. We couldn't even do rookie carryover uh, because of the instability of the files as we started out. It took us five, six restarts, I believe. I know it was at least four. Um, before we finally got stable enough to get moving and so far knock on wood we've been stable uh, but that could end at any moment it's kind of one of those things where you got to hold it very carefully it's like a bottle of nitrous that you have to hold in just such a fashion and just careful enough to where it doesn't explode in your face uh, it's frustrating that we have to do that it's aggravating it's ridiculous and it should be unacceptable but it is what it is unfortunately uh, if we want to deal with madden in this current climate we have to deal with uh, this to put it bluntly, shit show um, of Madden 23. It's a great game gameplay-wise, in my opinion. It's better than it's ever been in years gameplay-wise. But everything else is so bad that it really makes that good to great portion just completely fall off a cliff. Um, but yeah, we want to do the incentive plan. We want to get back to doing that. We want to reward owners that give us content, that give us help with the Associated Press, that give us help with the... Uh, with the Players Association, everything that people do to help the WFL be better and be better known in the space, we want to reward that. Uh, we didn't feel comfortable doing it last this season coming into Madden 23. Uh, we feel a little more comfortable about it now, but again, that could change in a heartbeat with the way this file is. Uh, so we want to do it. We'll see if we can do it, and if we can do it, we will do it. Uh, I'll just put it like that. Uh, Juke asks, what is your Super Bowl prediction if the playoffs started today? Well, I'm going to bring back up uh, I'm going to bring back up Neon Sports, and we're going to go back to the main page here. And I'm going to state for the record, I'm going to try and say the same thing I said last night. 
which as it slowly comes up, maybe, there we go. All right, take a little bit to load up here. Come on, baby. I'm going to say the same thing I said last night, and I'm going to say that in the AFC, I'm going to predict Miami to come out of the AFC. I think Ross is a really tough out. He's got a really good balance set up, and he's got two very good wide receivers in Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Uh, he's a good runner, even with a not great running back, if that makes sense. Um, and I think Juke will give him a run for his money. I think uh, Revolk in Cleveland is, is solid as well, but Miami's just proven he can beat Cleveland. Uh, I feel like in a dogfight contest, I feel like I'd give the nod to Miami over Indy. Uh, and some of these other teams, I think, just need an extra year of talent to, to help them out. So I'd say Miami and the AFC. And the NFC, it's very hard to go against uh, the, the defend, reigning defending uh, universal champ right now, which is Green Bay and Meek Boy. Uh, I think he's going to have a dogfight getting out of that division or getting out of that conference, I should say. I think with all the things he has to encounter – uh, the NFC East potentially being multiple foes in the NFC East, uh, a, a game Tampa Bay squad, uh, and and all the other pitfalls, that, and even Minnesota. I didn't even mention Minnesota because they're in the north. But Minnesota is going to be a tough out with Remster. Uh, Philly's going to be a tough out. Uh, any NFC East team that makes the playoffs is going to be tough as nails to beat. But Meek Boy's done it before. He's done it against some of these same foes. So I would dare say he's he's got the he's at least got the experience to get through that uh, murderer's row of a division uh, and murderer's row of a conference. And I, so uh, between Meek Boy and the Packers and Miami, I would say right now it would be Meek Boy would repeat. Uh, I love Ross. I think he's great. Uh, his whole roll tide shtick, you know, because he's Alabama boy. I get that. I love it. But I think he would. Uh, he would ultimately fall to Meek Boy and the Packers in the Super Bowl, and that's the way I'd call it right now if the playoffs started today or as of the time of looking at these stats. Uh, next question on the docket is, uh, what is the best way to quickly and efficiently produce content that benefits the league and the player? Uh, that's from Too Cold. Uh, too Cold, I said this last night and it got cut off, so I'm sorry, but that's why I'm re-recording this because I kind of want you in particular to hear this. Uh, because I, I feel like you want to contribute, and I want to I want to give you some advice uh, that's possible. The easiest ways I see personally contribute, and this is my personal thought process on it, is articles, which is have to be a minimum of four sentences, uh, and contributing to this podcast as far as submitting questions. I believe questions are ten points each, or maybe five. I think they might be five. But any question you submit, it's easy to submit. It doesn't take but a minute or two. And if it's a question that's legitimate that I can answer on the broadcast or on the podcast, I should say, um, it's something that I can answer and I'll, I'll answer and give you credit for it. So that's easy points that you keep track of at the end of the season. And then the other way is articles. Articles, I believe, are, I want to say 20 points each, maybe 10 points. But either way, four sentences minimum. It can be just little game recaps of, you know, just – uh, you know, scored touchdowns in first and third quarter. My opponent scored this and this in the fourth quarter. Ended up being this. Maybe a little comment from your head coach or something. Just something, something small and nice. There are examples on the website you can look at. Obviously, like I said, for me personally, I like writing. Uh, I'm fairly. I feel like I'm fairly good at it. Um, but not everybody is, and I completely understand that. Um. Okay, sorry, I had a bit of a jump take there. Uh, I had to go take care of something in the kitchen real quick. I'm fixing lunch as I'm doing this podcast. But too cold to kind of finish up and wrap up. Uh, for me, it's easiest for me to write articles. I'm good at I'm I feel like I'm fairly good at it. I understand not everybody is. Um, but articles and the committee, uh, giving documentation for the show would be the best way to do it. Uh, also, if you want to be creative, if you are of a creative bent, and you want to develop your own little show for the WFL. Uh, I know last Madden, one of our owners tried to start his own little weekly or maybe bi-weekly show about his team. And uh, he recorded about 20 or 30 minutes, if I remember correctly. It's been a little while since I've watched it. But it was a pretty solid podcast. I mean, it was a podcast about his team. And he kind of was going into things kind of similar to what I do here, but more statistical based on his side for his team specifically. Um, if you want to do stuff like that, if you want to do little blurbs like maybe... Uh, have like a press con a, a pseudo press conference with yourself, uh, you know, as a podcast or even on camera if you want to do that. Anything that could classify as a show, which is listed on the incentive play form as what classifies as a show. Or if you want clarification on it, get with me. Just DM me and I, we can talk about it. Um, 
but something like that, if you develop a new show and you and you stick with it throughout that season, you get 100 points, which is essentially, if I'm not mistaken, Tier 3 right off the bat. So just doing a show and being consistent with it would get you Tier 3 right off the bat, and then uh, other stuff on top of it would just be gravy. Um, but that would be the easiest things to do and the most effective things to do would be articles because those you can punch out really quick. You can do game recaps, which is once a week. And if you do, say, all 17 games you play times... 10 that's 100 if it's 10 points i can't remember if it's 10 or 20 if it's 10 points that's 170 out of i believe it's 250 for tier one if it's 20 points an article and you do all 17 games then you've you've hit tier one period that's there's no debate on that uh so if you want those tier one rewards uh you can kind of get in that way um but that would be what i would suggest to cold that would be the way i would go about things if if you're able to if you're not or if you have some ideas and you kind of want to spitball them by, by all means my dms are open man just just hit me up and let me know what you're thinking and uh, i can see if i can maybe help figure something out for you and figure out something that works with your skill set uh because ultimately i want you guys to use your skill sets to the best of their ability because like i said not everybody can write an article like i do not everybody can do podcasts like I kind of do. Um, but if you're able to, or if you have something in mind that you can do, like if you do graphics like Juke does, I give him credit for these graphics every time, this Chiefsman's Corner log, our uh, uh, logo, and uh, our WFL uh, splash uh, banner logo that we have for Neon Sports, all that's Juke and all that, and he does our MVP stuff, he does our Super Bowl banners that we've had. Um, so anything that you have a skill set for and you have a passion for, man, if you want to contribute it to WFL and we can figure out a way to do it and give you credit for it, I'm, I'm all ears, man. Just just let me know. And finally, last question on the docket. Uh, what are two teams from each conference that are currently not in the playoffs that you feel will be? Interesting question. All right, let me go back to the spread. Let me go back to here. So basically, my top seven at this point, this is as of week, mostly week 11 uh, games are done at this point. Uh, I... Team from each comp. Okay, so at this point, I'm picking eight through eight through twelve, or eight th from ten down, and I might look at some. Excuse me, might look at some standings. Uh, a team that's on the outside looking in, the Jets in the AFC. The Jets. Uh, Kobe is dangerous. Uh, Kobe, if he can get on a hot streak and get sneak into the playoffs, he will do some damage. He's a good user. He's a good player. He's a good strategist. Um, he's, he's He doesn't really have a true weakness, but he doesn't really have a true strength, and I think that's what makes him dangerous. Um, so if he sneaks into the play, if, if I had to pick somebody to sneak in the playoffs AFC, i pick the Jets. Uh, I think he's got a record for it. I think Jacksonville obviously be in CPU unless we get that filled. Uh, Jacksonville, I think, will falter. Uh, Buffalo, there's a bunch of teams ahead of him that he could leapfrog real easily and get in this playoff hunt. So I think the Jets and the AFC. In the NFC... Uh, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say Washington. I'm going to say the commanders, uh, waffles, uh, has been busy with multiple jobs and doing and having some other responsibilities. But I think waffles is, uh, when he's on his game, he is very, very tough to stop. Uh, nigh impossible just about, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Carolina in there, but they're kind of right there on the cusp. So I don't want to name them. And really, Washington's on the cusp as well. Um, another team I might name that just kind of gets away from naming folks that I know a lot. Uh, uh, well, how about how about Too Cold? How about Too Cold in the, in the 49ers? The 49ers are technically, well, they're technically in the playoffs. I can't name them. Uh, Chicago. I'll go Chicago. Um, Chicago has some work to do to get back up in this top spot. But they're 6-5 and five right now as of Week 11. Uh, I don't know what their schedule's like the rest of the way, but I could say Washington or Chicago. I know it's kind of a cop out not picking one, uh, but I, I'll take I'll take one of those two uh, going forward. I take Washington or Chicago in the NFC, and I would take um, I take the Jets in the AFC. Looking at that looking at that list, there's a lot of teams right there in the in the hunt. I think the Jets will leapfrog in there and get in there and get a wild card spot. And if they get a wild card spot, they'll be dangerous. Same as with the Bears or the Commanders. And no, I didn't state myself, even though I kind of was in that me in that mess, uh, because I never call myself out to make any sort of playoffs. I'm kind of like Jim Moore in that regard. Playoffs? No, not happening. Okay, so that kind of gives that ends us on the on the questions mark. Uh, that's all our Ask the Chief questions for this particular episode. 
So with that, I'm gonna approach the outro and I'm gonna thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I appreciate it. The WFL definitely appreciates it and we hope you are entertained by this show. Uh, let us know by throwing us a like, a subscribe, or leaving comments, good or bad. Any feedback is appreciated. Until next Tuesday, which is hopeful, uh, the corner is closed. <laughs>